I'm Dr. Amir Abbas. I'm staff interventional cardiologist and director cardi cath lab at University Medical Center. As far as the aneurysms uh, are concerned, it's a disease entity because of which almost 15,000 Americans die suddenly um, every year. It's a disease condition and state in which one of our main arteries, which is the aorta, in the abdominal region, this artery starts getting ballooned out and dilated. This happens because of the weakening of the walls of the aorta. Traditionally, this procedure was tackled uh, by doing open surgery and aneurysm repair surgery, um, which takes quite a toll and a burden on a patient's um, overall health. They require prolonged hospitalization. And therefore, um, slowly and gradually, the pendulum has shifted towards utilizing more of an endovascular approach, which tends to minimize the hospital stay of the patient and faster recovery, since it's a less invasive of a procedure. So we're gonna get started. I'll need a um, access needle. We are the first center where we, the interventional cardiologist, um, have uh, picked up on this procedure and are partnering with our surgeons to perform this procedure. The way we do this procedure, we have a combined multidisciplinary approach at University Medical Center. We have partnered with our surgeons uh, who provide us with a cut down on the femoral arteries. Femoral arteries are the arteries that pass through the groin area going to the lower extremity. Once our surgeons have given us the cut down, we interventional cardiologists, myself and my colleague, Dr. Siddiqui, we proceed and through our small catheters and wires, we get an access into the femoral artery. Okay. After accessing both the arteries with our sheets, we perform an angiogram under fluoroscopy. This angiogram highlights the aneurysmal segments of the aorta in the abdominal segment, or if it's a case of an iliac aneurysm, highlights the iliac aneurysms nicely. Once we have taken the angiographic shots, we use our special catheters, which are called marker catheters, and in some cases we use intravascular ultrasound as well to decide upon the different size of the grafts that we are going to utilize for a particular case. After we have made that assessment, we go ahead and proceed with um, an endovascular graft which is stretched into a smaller catheter that can be pushed through the sheet and be positioned under fluoroscopic guidance exactly at the spot where we want to cover the entire aneurysm and lay out a new tube within an old native tube, which is an aorta. So the idea is to exclude the aneurysmal sacchi segment of either the aorta or the iliac artery. And the way we do this, we basically put in a endovascular graft, which is a framework of metal with a wrap around PTFE material. So it's a tube within a tube concept. We lay this new graft out. It has two limbs attached to it. One limb goes to one side of the iliac artery, the other goes to the other side of the iliac artery. And once we are happy with our pictures, we gently tack up the endovascular graft with a balloon device, and that pretty much ends our case. Una vena que va para el corazón, este. Eh, me salió una bola y, y luego me dijo el, el, me dijeron ellos y esa bola ya, ya mero se le revienta porque está creciendo y llenándose de sangre ya cuando se llena de sangre y si entonces ya este se, 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 se revienta y se viene mucha hemorragia de sangre y se muere la persona My name is Tarek Siddiqui I'm a assistant professor um, I'm a director of interventional cardiology program so this, this lady as you know had uh, comorbidities. She's 88 year old. She has hypertensive hyperlipidemia. She basically came to see me for his abnormal CT scan. And the uh, CT scan 
basically suggested abdominal aortic aneurysm. You can see a big bubble aneurysm over here. So it, it just represents like a, like a water bottle. And uh, you know, this is the opening of the bottle and this is uh, the big part of the bottle. And you can see the big sac. And uh, so we usually measure it, the size, uh, uh, it's usually like this. It's like a pant, as you can see, the top part of the pant, and then these are two, uh, two, two legs of the pants. So we took a picture over here, and we just to confirm where exactly is the right renal artery is. And the right renal artery, you can see it's, it's over here. And we were marked, we were placed exactly in the right position where we want to be. After that, uh, we start deploying, and you can see over here that we deployed the stent. The stent looks like, like this. And after deploying, we make sure that we deployed in the, in the right, right place. And you can see we have deployed in the, exactly the place where we wanted it to be. And you can see over here, this is a contra limb, and it's already been deployed nicely. Uh, there's good sealing uh, in the neck area, so there's no blood pass behind the graft into the, into the sac. And that was our purpose, so that the blood, instead of going through the sac and create a pressure and result into a rupture, it will stay away from that and go through the graft. And uh, over a period of time, these, these aneurysm shrinks in size, and that's what, our, uh, that's what we want to achieve. And this is a picture uh, which shows uh, excellent result with no uh, endoleaks and there is no dissections. Uh, so this was one of our final final picture. Now usually uh, we, these patients goes home in two to three days as compared to if they get a surgery they go five to seven days after. The recovery is usually seven to eight days in cases we, when we do percutaneous repair versus openly, openly done it usually can take 30 days or even to two months. And the uh, and majority of the studies have shown the, the, uh, that uh, it's, it's much more comfortable for the patient because they can be on their feet earlier. Gracias a Dios que pues, todo salió bien, todo perfectamente bien. Todo, muy, mis sanidades, rápido. Así es que pues, le doy muchas gracias a, a, pues, a Dios y a los doctores, que, pues, que hay buenos doctores. Este es doctor Sidiki, ese fue el que me hizo la operación, muy buen doctor que es, perfecto, perfecta operación me hizo, y estoy muy contenta, y todos están contentos. The most important thing you have to pick the right appropriate patients, and there are a lot of patients who are we, who we do are not the candidate who can go for the surgery, so they have a lot of comorbidities. So in in ideal world, these these not not are not exactly the ideal patients because there's a lot of comorbidities and there's a risk of complication, but I still feel this is the best option which we have right now.